Today's session is on significance of enneometal factors in an interior, sources of light and reflectance factor. Welcome to the session. Technological advances may be innumerable, but for any building or structure, the fundamental purpose or the primary function stays more or less unchanged. It has to protect the inmates from the external environmental influences on the one hand and from natural calamities on the other. In recent years, gratifying both the function satisfactorily along with an eye for aesthetics is receiving priority. A project affording a design space not only as a status symbol but also a space which promises the needed comfort and convenience to perform the functions allocated to it is a premium. Hence, the perception of the inmates in such interiors gains significance. There are many factors in the environment the designer has to consider in the designing process to gratify the required needs and also to satisfy other aspects also of the project. Considered in those terms, the geographical location of the space and the type of architectural features desired emerge as major designing factors. An understanding of the factors therefore becomes essential. Perhaps light as an environmental factor warrants special address as it is received in two forms that is a natural form and as artificial form. This module entails three major objectives. It aims to delineate environmental factors and their influence on space designing, project practical measures to have a control of the factors to promise conducive environments for living, know about light the supportive medium and its manipulation. Environmental psychology is a well emerged branch of study that considers the interplay of human relations and behaviors within the context of the built and natural environments, the interplay of the micro, meso and macro environments. This branch of study relates fairly well to the aspects considered in space designing. The physical environment existing outside the house obviously affects the emotions and behavior of the people who occupy spaces, especially the rooms in the house. For instance, even when staying indoors, a cloudy day can cause discomfort and mental disturbances for a person. Similarly, a noisy event, for example, a political meeting being conducted in the neighborhood can be disturbing for an elderly or a patient and a student preparing for exams. Though they happen in the external environment, their impact can be great on the inmates. These are pointers addressing the significance to be accorded to segregate external environment intrusions while designing in interiors. It may demonstrate how internal structures are to be built or designed so that external influences have the least influence on the qualities of the interior and the residing inmates. Coming to the point under consideration, it can be said that those factors which can pose as a challenge in the natural world can be successfully manipulated and utilized in other forms and used in interiors. With scientific research revealing all the ways our environments can affect the mind, these factors all the more become more crucial in designing space. The field of environmental psychology calls for designers to look through a different lens and strategically examine the inner lives of the people who use these buildings. The goals lie in integrating environmental factors such as HVAC, illumination, color, art and ergonomics into the unconscious mind so that one's perception is positive, which in turn shall motivate one to be more effective wherever they are and in whatever they do. Environmental psychology as a field of study exhibits an overlapping similarity with many other disciplines like planning spaces for living, ergonomics and human factors, lighting, sound and acoustics, interior design, etc. The interior design approach has been defined as a process of creative problem solving, a process of creative constructive behavior. It is a systematic process of conscious thought that integrates academic knowledge with imagination. The design process can be viewed 
as a sequence of steps or stages. When something is designed, the designer will have to think about a number of things which will usually have a large impact on the design and how it eventually turns out. One needs to visualize the outcome before embarking on the design process. The factors which need to be considered by the designer during the design process are the intended function, aesthetics, user needs, concepts of sustainability, laws pertaining to buildings, ergonomics in designs, safety and security, factors contributing to maintenance of sound health, availability of tools, materials, expertise and existing standards. There are several factors in the external environment which by default have either an entry or have an influence in an interior space. They need to be understood, their influence on inmates analyzed and measures to tackle them practiced. They exert an influence on the behavioral aspects of the people using the spaces. Evidently, the ultimate aim of providing a comfort zone for the inmates becomes not as a question of choice. Hence, consideration of these factors in space designing gains significance. Few such environmental factors are the incident daylight, that is natural light, external temperature, humidity, annual or seasonal rainfall, direction of wind, type of land or terrain, and the topography. All these factors showcase a concrete impact on the residents staying within a built environment. To curtail the impact, a basic practice of control over the indoor environmental quality would prove highly beneficial. Indoor environmental quality includes statements for nine specific characteristics. It includes four characteristics of indoor air quality and five characteristics of human comfort which need to be addressed in all kinds of space designing. Pointers of satisfaction for appreciable indoor air quality are these. Drafting the plan meeting the basic requirements for indoor air quality. Restricting exposure of the inmates to environmental tobacco you smoke. Controlling IAQ issues resulting from construction or renovation process. And selecting low emitting materials and furnishings. Coming to the factor of uh, human comfort. We have to facilitate high level individual occupant control of HVAC and lighting systems, ensure appropriate thermal conditions, create interface between indoor spaces and outdoor environments through daylight adequacy and beautiful views, monitor optimal acoustic conditions, devise energy efficient lighting mechanisms and optimum control. According to the Samkhya school, light is one of the five fundamental subtle elements Tanmatra, out of which emerge the gross elements. The Vaisheshika school gives an atomic theory of the physical world on the non-atomic ground of ether, space and time. The basic atoms are those of the earth, prithvi, water, pani, fire, agni and air, vayu. Light rays are taken to be a stream of high velocity of Tejas atoms, fire atoms. The particles of light can exhibit different characteristics depending on the speed and the arrangements of the Tejas atoms. The Vishnu Purana refers to sunlight as the seven rays of the sun. Light and lighting are thus elements considered indispensable in a person's everyday life. Among all elements, lighting is the most important one. It is a vital element of design. It affects not only one's perception but also one's response to the environment. Good lighting makes a house warm and friendly, lively or restful and is also essential for efficient vision. An ideal lighting can be obtained by having enough knowledge on their importance, requirement, types and lighting required for specific areas. Selection of the right kind of lighting in appropriate places, adding glamour and charm too to everyday living receives special mention. Being an environment factor, it affects every human being. Any surface that is struck by light rays reflects some of that light. So it has to be handled with caution. Now let's see the importance of lighting. Lighting in the interior of house should be given due consideration because of the following reasons. Seeing things properly 
and clearly requires ample lighting. It further enhances visibility. An adequately illuminated house always looks bright. Emphasizing an area or an object in the interior and exterior of the house comes easily with proper lighting. Work productivity and outcome can be improved with adequate lighting facilities. Prevention of accidents both in interiors and exteriors warrant good lighting. Lighting choices reflect the inmate's taste, character and individuality. Color scheme in interiors about which much thought has been focused receives attention only in properly placed lighting. Above all, sunlight can kill germs which are present in the surroundings and natural light keeps one healthy, cheerful and also enable procurement of vitamin D. Lighting or illumination is the deliberate use of light to achieve a practical or aesthetic effect. It includes the use of both artificial light sources like lamps and light fixtures as well as natural illumination by capturing daylight. Daylighting that is using daylight through the windows, skylights and or light sleeves is sometimes used as a main source of light during daytime in buildings. This can save energy in place of using artificial lighting which represents a major component of energy consumption in buildings. Proper lighting can enhance task performance, improve the appearance of an area or have positive psychological effects on occupants. Indoor lighting is usually accomplished using light fixtures which are a key part of interior design. It can also be an intrinsic component of landscape projects. Permitting maximum diffuse light into the interiors can create dramatic effects, but utmost care should be taken to avoid glare and shadow and over brightness in interiors as they are highly harmful to the human eye. Several measurement methods have been developed to control glare resulting from indoor lighting design. The Unified Glare Rating UGR the visual comfort probability and the daylight glare index are some of the most well-known methods of measurement. In addition to these methods, four main factors influence the degree of discomfort glare. That is the luminance of the glare source, the solid angle of the glare source, the background luminance and the position of the glare source in the field of view. All these must be taken into account while providing lighting. Source type and purpose of light and the reflectance factor of materials used and the surfaces pre present decide the achievement of satisfaction the user desires. First one is the sources of light. The major source of light is the sun of course. Beyond that, artificial light in the home is primarily produced from an electric current flowing into an incandescent bulb or fluorescent tube. Sunlight gives very bright light, kills germs and purifies the air. It can be warm, yet provides light which will bring out the true colors in objects, hence in its significance in interiors. The two commonly used sources of artificial lighting in interiors based on lighting elements used are also of two types, incandescent bulb and the fluorescent tube. Incandescent bulbs are typically, they typically have a tungsten filament that is heated by electricity to the temperature at which it glows. It affords a concentrated source of light and can be directed easily to a point or area. The bulbs light instantly an area and are easy to maintain but they produce glare and have a lower output and shorter life which make them more costly to operate than fluorescent lights. Because the fixtures are simpler and bulbs of different voltages can be used in the same socket it is used more often in homes. There are three general categories of incandescent bulbs, general purpose, reflector bulbs, used for accent lighting and in decorative bulbs. Incandescent light is produced by heating a tungsten filament sealed within a glass bulb until it glows. The kind of lights generate heat, so it is important to allow for air circulation between the bulbs and ceilings or walls or it will cause the bulb to burn out quickly and often results in scorched scaling, ceilings above the fixtures. They are available in many different shapes, sizes and amounts of light produced. Because of their warm glow, they display a tendency to alter color schemes 
and modify the reflectance factor of materials and furnishings used. Fluorescent tubes offer a luminescent or cold source of light. A glass tube with an inside coating of fluorescent powder is filled with vaporized mercury and argon. The ends are then sealed with cathodes. When electric current is passed, it activates the fluorescent powder to glow. When the gases are activated, invisible ultraviolet rays cause the fluorescent coating to produce visible light. Although fluorescent tubes come only in straight or circular shapes and curved tubular forms, they have considerable diversity in color. They are also much less energy consuming than incandescent bulbs. They diffuse more evenly or uniformly and reduce glare and shadows. It can provide both cool and warm atmosphere. Because the installation requires more than the simple switch and socket of the incandescent bulbs, its initial cost is higher. But the tubes last longer, are cooler, require fewer fixtures and use less electricity than the incandescent. The greater efficiency and economy make them much more practical for everyday use. A third type of lighting using CFLs and LEDs have stolen the hearts of consumers now which are practically more efficient, brighter and durable and above all energy efficient. They advocate for the concept of environmental sustainability too. Before we get along with the next aspect, I have a question for you. Can you expand CFL and LED? Yes? Fine. Then make a tour of your house and find out the number of artificial light sources you have provided in your interior. If you have more of LED, it is proof that you belong to the energy conscious because our government at present is also frantically implementing the projects in street and rural lighting. They offer CFL and LED which are, uh, which are not only energy saving but also promise long life and reduced power consumption and added benefits compared to the conventional ones. Further, they can also help in choosing proper reflectance, an important factor in successful interior designing. Now let us analyze the types of artificial lights chosen. Those selected for use in interiors can be considered under four utility based concepts. Choice based on purpose and effect. Choice based on type of lighting and element used. Choice based on reflection and choice based on lighting fixtures. Now let's have a look at the classification of lighting based on choice preferred. If our choice is based on the purpose and effect, we have three sources from which to choose. That is ambient general lighting, task or local lighting and accent or decorative lighting. Lighting element used, we have four types. That is incandescence, fluorescent tubes, CFL and LED. If it is reflection the major factor, we have five types. We can go in for five types. It can either be direct, indirect, diffused, semi-direct or semi-indirect lighting. And if it is lighting fixture that is a botheration, then it is either architectural or built-in lighting or non-architectural portable lighting. Let us see the first one. It is choice based on purpose and effect. These offer three types of lighting. They are ambient or general lighting, which is the first one. It illuminates the room uniformly, like how the sun illuminates the earth. It enables people to see every corner of a room in a safe, reassuring way and brings to equal attention the design and color of the whole space. It minimizes bulkiness of furniture, the darkness of shadows and often harsh contrast of local lighting. It is rarely bright enough for close work and it can be harsh and monotonous. So it is always combined with local lighting. It can produce glare and shadow. Second one is task or local lighting. It indicates direct and functional illumination needed in specific places like specific activities for example, reading, cooking, sewing, eating, etc. provided by this lighting. This light source can be high or low but shielded. Local lighting also creates pools of light that attract attention and draw people toward a circle of activity and warmth. It can be used to help direct tra traffic, set a mood, 
locate up large rooms into islands or make up a small room appear to have several distinct areas thus visually enlarging its space it assures focused illumination usually the source of lighting is a portable lamp with some type of shade to concentrate light in a certain direction third one is accent or decorative lighting typical source of decorative lighting include candles crystal chandeliers fixtures with many small lamps pin spot or tiny christmas lights the special contribution made by accent lighting can be experienced immediately when one enters a room filled with sparkling lights it stimulates helps accentuate focal point and provide the personal touch that highlights a room this kind of lighting enriches one's environment by establishing a pleasing ambiance it may be illumination of an art object the receptive flow in an entry way or colored globes infusing a space with tinted light it may be a combination of general lighting and task lighting unless one is very prudent and careful in the choice of these lights based on purpose the primary aspect for which they are used it can cause glare shadow and may also be responsible for defective reflectance what is reflectance and what is reflectance factor this is another aspect about which designers have to practice caution as the lighting provided ipso facto can create fantastic lighting effects or cause concern for reflectance it is calculated as the ratio of the reflected to the incident flux a reflected flux to the incident flux stated in simple terms it is a reflection of a fraction of the radiant energy reflected from the surface interior designers architects consultants of color and paints in interiors environmentalists and even medical personnel uh, building a hospital should show interest in deciding this factor before choosing a color paint glass or metal accessories and flooring tiles this is applicable for all kinds of buildings especially residences so a small ms can change the ambience in its totality the aspect of re reflectance is the factor that can decide if one's home is welcoming peaceful calm cool and rejuvenating for the user contrarily it can be jarring or renerving or very harmful to normal sight to create proper ambience materials and accessories used in the interior are chosen based on their light reflectance value lrv which is an indication of the visible and usable light that gets reflected from a given surface when it is lighted by a known source they are generally given in the labels of many products designers planning the lighting component in an interior estimate the number and type of light sources and fixtures based on these values it enables them to provide appropriate lighting effects desired by the clients to satisfy exclusive needs they are also highly essential in places where children elderly and physically challenged people reside where this aspect comes in hand to caution them about important aspects like wall to floor junctions floor levels ramps door corners handles for grabbing and the like in a contrast color lrv is a value depicting the proportion of light reflected back from the surface so the more polished specular a surface higher the reflection similarly among neutral colors reflectance for white is high especially when used on the roof it provides a comparatively cool interior and saving in energy use of dark colors or black for roof will give you a result in the contrast it all depends upon ultimately the material of the surface where the light falls room surfaces and luminaire reflectors also showcase typical reflectance levels metals display maximum reflectance factor as a high as high as a range extending from 50 to 92% that is low polished nickel to highly polished silver 20 to 70% by finishing materials that is granite is the lowest and marble has the highest and 10 to 85% by various paints brick is the lowest and white is the highest similarly concrete plywood cabinets wood timber used for furniture and doors all have their own reflectance factor and hence reflect the light falling on them to a certain extent 
if not treated properly this character of light as a supportive medium may jeopardize the entire decorative system in the interior in summary i would say that the environmental factors may appear very docile but their impacts on mankind especially in indoor situations can prove harmful relegating due respects to each and every environmental factor will render a very healthy place to live in in conclusion i would add that we inspect your own surroundings and rectify defects if any i hope you have understood all the three objectives of this session wish you all good health in your healthy indoor environment thank you